Hello, my name's Julie from So Unique and I will pop all the links down below where you can find me on social media. Well, this is going to be a slightly different video than what I normally do because normally it's vlogs. I do do a few tutorials and what I thought I would do is, I don't know whether to keep this video in the tutorial section or create another sort of playlist because what I want to do is have a section for how I make so it might not necessarily be a full-on tutorial but I just want to share with you how I make certain things and this video is going to show you how I make a baby quilt now this is a commission for somebody who came into the shop and asked for a Peter Rabbit baby quilt now the fabric that I'm using is the new fat quarter bundle, which is called Once Upon a Time, which is really, really nice. And then I've got two other different fabrics that I'm using to go with it. So if I can find a photograph and I remember, I will put a picture in up here somewhere of the actual collection, or I might pop it in at the end, which is probably what I'll do. Now, this the first one, it's got Once Upon a Time on and it's got several of the uh, Peter Rabbit friends in there. So I fussy cutted, fussy cutted? <laughs> I fussy cut um, around these. And the next one is this with the lovely toadstools on and you can see Peter there. So I've had to fussy cut this as well. So there's Peter and I don't know if that's flops though. But this, this is really pretty fabric. And then this is a, another one. You've got uh, Mr. Fox on there. And there's some other characters on here as well. That's just the sort of the foliage, which is really nice. And you've got Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. So these have all been fussy cut. And this one's not been fussy cut because it's uh, like a repeat pattern. Uh, this one's been fussy cut along with this one. Now both of these came off the same piece of fabric and then this is Peter with the lettuce. So this has been fussy cut so I can at least get a rabbit with the lettuce. <laughs> um, and the ruler that I'm using is a four and a half inch square and you're not going to see this. On the step. So you can usually pick these up from uh, Amazon or places like that. They are quite easy to find, I think. So the square is going to come out at about four inch, which is perfect for the quilt will be just, this is in inches, because the lady gave me a size of 36 by 28 inches. So I did say to her that the amount of squares that I would do in, it was going to come out slightly smaller. Um, but I could always put another another um, square on to make it bigger. So she was quite happy with that. So it is going to come out at just over 36, 36 inches by 28. So we might be looking at just over 30 inch and getting up for a metre. So yes, we'll see. We'll see as we go along. Now normally I would spray starch my fabric and I use Best Press. It's my favourite. I've used this for years and I tend to buy mine either from the quilting shows because usually you can get a good deal or for the last few years I've actually got it off Amazon and this is a 16 ounce bottle so sometimes you can get these on a good deal on Amazon but normally I will buy the bigger bottle which I think is 32 ounce I think and then I will decant it into a spray bottle and to be honest when I last bought some they actually came from America the 32 ounce ones and I bought two of them and it was far cheaper to buy it on Amazon from America and have it posted to the UK so what the prices are now I don't know and this this has got a fragrance of linen fresh. You can get a lavender and I'm sure you can get others and I'm sure you can get just a, a non-fragrance one as well. But like I say, it's been a while since I bought any. So I don't 
really know sort of what prices they are at the minute but like I say check out your local craft shop Amazon or anywhere else online I mean I used to sell this but the company I buy sort of my fabrics and the rulers off they stopped selling it so I have to <laughs> resort to Amazon I'm afraid um, if you're fussy cutting you can draw around your template with Oh, this is a well used it's a Frixon pen. It's uh, I think it's a pilot, yeah, Frixon pen. Oops, I think we're focusing. There we go. <laughs> or an undescript one, which I've got an undescript, undescript one as well, and that works perfectly well. Um, now these I do sell in my little shop. Um, but always test your pen on your fabric to make sure you can iron it off because sometimes once you've marked your fabric. You iron the mark off and it will come back which that's what you don't want so always test before you cut you cut out your main pieces you can use chalk as well uh, I've, i don't know if i can see i can't find it here oh yes i can here we go no it's not no i haven't got one you can use a, a chalk pen it's a, a pen with a roller on and it's just full of chalk powder depending on the colour of your fabric now I don't know if you can get different colour chalk powder but yeah again that's something you'd have to look online for um, you, you could use tailor's chalk but I would be careful because some tailor's chalk the marks do not come off so like I say whatever you, you've got whatever you buy test it on your scrap fabric before you put it onto you your good you know your main fabric that you're cutting out um you can get different spray starches supermarkets have starch starch sprays which they used to be about two pounds a spray can and you can usually find that in the section for soap powders and things like that um they're quite good but sometimes you do get a little bit of white powdery residue which you do you can just brush it off so it's it's fine but like I say, this one is my favourite. And normally I would spray starch all my fabric first and then I would start cutting. But this time I didn't do it because while I was at work, I just cut out the fabric just to sort of help speed things up a little bit. So now I've got to spend my time spraying and ironing each piece of fabric, which is going to take me a little time. <laughs> so I'll show you the next step in a minute. Well, that's all my fabric all pressed now and the spray starch makes it a little bit firmer so it's nice to touch and it makes it easier to sew your pieces together and it's also meant to help with to stop fraying so i think i've got another i've got to find another fabric to go in with this but what i'm going to do now is just make a start on the stitching a row together so I can get an, an idea of the size and if it's how I like it and I'll just quickly explain fussy cutting now fussy cutting might seem quite wasteful to some people and <laughs> but it's necessary when you want uh, a certain pattern I mean you can see how I mean the pattern is not big on here but if I, if I just cut out four and a half inch squares 
I won't get a pattern uh, as I want it. So I'm going to fussy cut. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, which one should we start with? I'll have to turn, turn the camera around so you can actually see what I'm doing. So bear with me a minute. Right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this one because this design is too close to the bottom. Obviously, that part of that's chopped off. So I'm going to do the once upon a, a time there. So I'm just going to eyeball to see where the design is to make sure it's sort of in the centre. And then I've got my, I've got a red Frixon pen here, which I've tested on the fabric and it disappears. So all we do is draw a line round. And then I'm going to cut it out in a second. Uh, there we go. So hopefully you can see the line. I'll just bring you down slightly. Um, so you can use, obviously you need a cutting mat underneath. You can use a rotary cutter or you can just chop it out with scissors. Now, yes, I know this is going to be a little bit wasteful, but if you do English paper piecing with like the hexagon pieces or the square pieces, you can use the, these areas up for something else. So it doesn't go to waste. So I'm going to get that cut out and cut out a few more and then I will be back with you. Now I'm going to sew my squares together with a quarter of an inch seam. I've got a, a foot on on my machine that's got a, like an edge on it so I can get a quarter of an inch seam. So it's right sides together. Now you can pin these if you want, um, but I'm not. And uh, I'm just going to get sewing. So that is the first one. So I'm just going to keep on doing this until I finish the first line, and then I'll come back to you. And I've just finished my first line looks really nice now you can see from the back what the seams like now i know you'll have seen me reverse when i start and finish you don't have to do that i know a lot of people don't do it but i like to do it so nothing comes undone because it can do so what i'm going to do now i'm going to press the seams so you can either press press this row say all facing this way all the way along and then the next row you would press facing that way or you can just open up I can't get my fingers working you can open up the seam and press it flat like that now I've done it both ways and I can't say I like one method better than the other it's a personal choice really so I'm going to, like I said, open my seams up and I'm just going to get pressing. So I'll just share that little bit with you so you can see what it looks like. And then I'll come back to you.
now I'm going to lay out my second row. So I've got all the same order of the fabrics. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to go through them. So this one is going to move to there. If you can see it, that's it. So that's going to go there. And then this one will go next. And then that one will go afterwards and so on and so on until you get to the end so the end one on the bottom row is the toadstools so that one comes to your second row that is your start which goes there so i'm just going to continue and lay these out and then i'll get that one stitched and i'll come back and show you how it looks and I've just finished stitching the second line together so I can I hope you can sort of see what I'm doing here and how the pattern's sort of forming now obviously you can put yours together how you want you could do say a block of four of these whatever I mean there's no right or wrong way with this so what I'm going to do now is continue stitching the lines and then I'm going to take it to work tomorrow and lay it out on my table so you can get a better idea of how it's going to look and then I will be stitching all the rows together so I will share that little bit with you and I'm at work today and this is the quilt all laid out on the cutting table as you can see how the patterns formed I'm really pleased with it and the size looks absolutely perfect now if you'll notice on this this edge I've numbered them all makes it easier depending on your pattern if you have to move uh, anything or it, it falls over you know sort of where your rows go and uh, yeah you can keep a better check when you're putting them together because it's easy to make a mistake when you're sewing your rows together by picking up the wrong strip so now I'm going to start sewing them together and now I'm going to put the rows together so you can see I've just got row one and row two so you flip row two on top of row one and you now need to match your seams up now I've got some I don't know if you have to see these some little pins and I like forks I will put a oops I will put a picture in um, I can't find my box at the minute, I've only got a couple, but I do find that these help to keep um, your, your lines together so they don't sort of move. Because if you use ordinary pins, they can move. So I'm just lining the two seams up and then I'm going to pop a pin in. And I'm going to do the same on the next one. And I mean, you don't have to do this. You can, you can put an ordinary pin in, but if you don't sew over your pins, uh, you'll break your needle on your machine if you're not careful. So I'm just going to flip that back. That looks okay. So I'm now going to sew all the strip together and I'll come back and show you what it looks like and then I'll continue doing the rest and now we're all ready to stitch so I just thought I'd show you this little bit this is the pot of clips it's from Clover I'm not sure what they're called whether they're just fork pins or something else but I will have a look and I will leave it in the description box down below so off to the sewing machine
and now I've got three rows stitched together so and you see me sew so that's all I'm going to do now I've got another five rows to put together so I'm just going to get on with that because I'd like to get that finished today while I'm here at the shop and then we'll get on to sorting out some backing and some wadding so I will see you all in a little bit and the panel's all stitched together now so it's all pressed I've pressed all the seams and we're now on a piece of uh, um, batten. Uh, it's a 80% 80, 80 cotton, 20% mixed fibres. Really nice this one. And uh, yep, yeah, so I'm going to start putting the sandwich together now. So I'm just going to fold that bit back and then I've got some BO5, BO5, 505 temporary adhesive spray. So I'm just going to pop this on now. So it holds it all together. And there we go. Just smooth it down. You don't have to rub, push, or just say push too hard. And then I'll do the other half. Now the next stage is to find some uh, backing and then I will get that cut to, to size of the wadding and I'll get it pressed. Right, the backing is now on the back of the quilt. I don't know if you can see this properly but this is a Peter Rabbit script. So that's what I've used for the backing. So I'm just now going to put some more spray adhesive on like I did with the front and then turn it back over to the front and then it'll be ready for quilting and now I'm ready to start the quilting I've got my quilting foot on my sewing machine and what I'm going to do now is start in the centre so it's this line here and I'm going to go right across and then I'm going to do the same line on each set of squares over this side and then go on to this side then turn it round and then go across from the other direction so I end up with a cross so I've done the first one so here's the first line so now I'm going to go on to this one straight across there all the way up right the way to the top and then whoops sorry We'll do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, because you, you see it gets shorter, and then this one.
and the quilting's all done now. So really pleased with it, it's turned out well. So what I'm going to do now is trim off all this excess. And I'm now ready to do the binding. So I have cut four two inch strips of fabric. So now I'm going to join them together. So as I've got a pattern, if you lay one strip down like that, and then get your other piece, so the pattern's sort of going in the same direction, lay that on the top there, so, so we're at a right angle. I've drawn a line, I don't know if you can see this properly, from, from there to there, and I'm just going to pop a pin in it. And then you're going to take this to the machine and stitch across that bit. And then when you open it out, your piece of fabric, the pattern is all going along in one direction. So I'm going to do that on the rest of the pieces and then I'll have a long strip and we'll chop that little bit off there leaving like a quarter of an inch seam and then you need to press it open um, and then the next bit will be folding it half you could do with a bit of spray starch on and ironing it and then we'll be ready to attach it to the quilt I think what I'm going to do is just sort of show you how I'm going to put the binding on um, before I actually start sewing. I think it would be easier. Um, I'm starting at the centre of the bottom of the quilt. So I've just clipped that on there. I've got a little bit of excess. And this is a quarter of an inch seam. So I'm going to start and stitch from where that uh, clip is 
down to about here then I'm going to put this piece of fabric back down and then continue stitching all the way along and we're going to show, I'm going to show you the corner piece now so what I'm going to do is continue stitching until I'm about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric now I'm just going to mark it so I'm going to stitch there and do a back stitch so it doesn't come undone then I'm going to fold the fabric over so it's at a right angle I don't know if you can see there we go and then fold it back down so it looks like that and then we start stitching a quarter of an inch in from there so then you'll have a nice mitered corner and I'm going to do that all the way around and I will come back and show you how we finish off the binding and I've finished sewing the binding on and I've come to the end now so I've just chopped the excess off now on this side where I started I've just folded over a piece by about a quarter of an inch and then I've got an excess here so what I've done is I stopped stitching there I have trimmed a little bit off there now I mean this is only one way of doing it you can do it other ways it's personal choice so what I'm going to do now is just fold, put, no, not fold it, just pop that down there and just pop it in there. Just fold that over and then I'm going to put a clip on it to hold it in place. And I'm now going to go and continue stitching from there to there and then that's the binding on. Right, well that's the binding finished off now so what I'm going to do is just show you the next stage now you can see we've got this so what I want to do is I'm going to just give this a press I'm not doing it now because I'm going to have some lunch but um, yeah I'm going to press that I'll turn it over right let's see if we can see I'll show you how I do it so once you've pressed it I'm hand stitching this on so I'm just going to clip that on there and when you come to the corner so you get a nice mitre I'm just going to press that down there and then you just sort of fold it it folds over like a, oh, I don't know how to describe it <laughs> Let me just see if I can like that. If you've got excess bulk on the coil, you can just trim a little bit off. But I don't know if you can see this properly. Let's go down a little bit. And then it's just going to be like a, an overstitch or like a whip stitch or something. And I'm going to hand stitch it all the way around. So that is a job for the weekend. I can take my time. And then I'll come back and uh, share the finished result.
and the quilt's all finished now. Sorry if you can hear a noise in the background, I've got my fan eaters on because it's cold in here today. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd quickly share this with you before it goes off to its uh, new owner. It's, it needs a bit of a press because it's been folded up in my bag, but I'm really pleased with it. And the size of the finished quilt is 31 cent, no, 31 inches by 31 inches, which is, I think is about 80 centimetres. So it's turned out really well. There, so I'm just going to press that now and it'll probably be going off to its new owner well, sometime today. And I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made a baby quilt. I thoroughly enjoyed making the quilt and I enjoyed doing the filming part of it. I must admit it has taken me quite a while to get the video edited. And uh, yeah, so like I said, I hope you enjoy it. And if you've got any suggestions of anything that you would like to see on a how I make, please let me know down below and I will see what I can do. I've already got a little list of uh, things I want to do. Also in this, this section of how I make, I'd like to maybe add other things apart from sewing or maybe crafting. So if you are a regular follower of my channel, if there's something that I've made in the past, whether it's something in the kitchen that you'd like a little bit more in-depth view of things, please just let me know. Um, and also, if you haven't su subscribed to the channel, um, please subscribe, like, comment. Uh, it helps my channel to grow because uh, otherwise YouTube won't see that people are liking things and then obviously my videos don't get seen by people. So if you've got time to spare, subscribe to the channel. I'd be very grateful. And I will see you all again soon with um, another How I Made at some point. I'm not sure when or how often I'm going to upload these things. It's obviously because it's in between everything else. But if you're a regular, I will see you all again next week on my vlog. So take care, everyone. Have a lovely week and I will see you all again soon. Bye for now.